Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Friends of Bangladeshi. Each time we bring a very special person to our show. We ask him questions, we share ideas, and um, basically um, he is a friend. And before I introduce him, let's go and see a video clip. Thank you. Tony Lee is a councillor of Haibikum District Council. He first visited Bangladesh in 1980s. Since then, he visited Bangladesh 30 times. He was one of the first Englishmen who brought attention to Bangladeshi garments industry to Europe. He was one of the founder of the Conservative Friends of Bangladesh and visited Bangladesh with the Parliamentary Social Action Team to do charity work. Welcome back. We have just seen a video clip about the person who has come to talk to us today in our show, Friends of Bangladeshi. Uh, he's none other than Tony Lee. Welcome. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Chanadas. Thank you. Alaikum salam. You are a friend. You've been to Bangladesh many times. You know the community very well. Very well, yes. When you first visited Bangladesh? I first visited Dhaka in the uh, early 1980s. Okay. Um, well before they developed the airport very well. Okay. I remember getting off the plane there for the first time in the pouring rain and getting on a 1952 old Bedford bus to be taken to the to, taken to the terminal, the terminal? Um, and then going in the terminal and then there was an immediate power cut and everybody was sort of trying to find their way through okay. um, and uh, quite an experience and quite an introduction to a very interesting country, country which uh, became independent not Absolutely. many years it's before back. that's yeah. exactly right yeah and and to be honest then there was only one hotel that uh, I was told I could stay in uh, which was the Sonagon and uh, okay. I stayed there uh, on numerous occasions so much so they thought I was a local I think um, and, and I was one of the a team of people that suddenly decided in the UK that Bangladesh was the, the place to go and try and work out to buy textiles, garments, garments etc. So. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it is one of the most uh, powerful nation so long as garment is industry is concerned, one yeah. of the top five. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, and obviously, uh, various governments have given it the GSP, which means we don't have to pay any duty on that, duty which on is that. a big incentive, and I, and I hope they keep it there. What, what do you think about the Bangladeshi hospitality? Well, you can see it, it, it's reflected in how they work in this country. Mm -hmm. You go into a Bangladeshi restaurant and you get a very good welcome. Um, in in uh, Bangladesh, as far as staying in hotels and, and, and dining with people, it, when you go out with the factory people and this sort of thing, it's always been very, very, uh, um, I've always been very well looked after. Um, and uh, the standard is very good. I mean, lots of people will say they don't eat when you're in Bangladesh mm -hmm. and all this sort of thing. Well, I've eaten more in Bangladesh than I think I've eaten in the UK, you know. I'm just, okay. You've um, never had any stomach ache or anything? Once. <laughs> and that's, that's an Emirates. Everybody. <laughs> an Emirates Airlines managed to get me back to Dubai, um, and uh, there I stayed for two days to get better, and then I came back. But no problem sure. at all. And it was probably okay. my fault. Did it you visit Silet at all? Silet. I was in Silet three years ago. It was the last time I went to Bangladesh, okay. and I, I went with a parliamentary social action team. Okay. So there were a number of MPs, a couple from the House of Lords. We went to Silet. We stayed in Silet. They must have known we were going because they had their first earthquake there in 41 years when we arrived. So the earthquake yes. <laughs> knew yes. that you were going to yes. go. Um, and uh, we went up into the foothills um, of the uh, the mountains and we visited a, a girl's orphanage. And we then, a lot of my colleagues that came with me were working in a school doing some renovation work. And the welcome we got was unbelievable. Um, and uh, the only the only and we also then went back to Dhaka. Um, met the president and also the prime minister, um, and we were made very, very welcome. The visits yes. lasted since 1980s? Yes. To three years ago? Till three years three ago. Years ago. How I, many visits? About 30. 30? Yes. Okay. Um, they even gave me, they even knew when I arrived at the airport, the, the guy on the, uh, I used to get my visa at the airport because it was okay. cheaper than buying it here. <laughs> Okay, so, I used so to you were like a Bangladeshi I was citizen. like a Bangladeshi, and then uh, yeah. I, I sort of went straight through. I didn't get held up. 
uh, and normally somebody carried my bag as well. So okay. uh, no, I had a very good relationship there with, with everybody I was involved with. I never had a problem. Okay. But I will tell you one funny story because this is uh, this did concern me at the time. I was, I was staying at the Sonogone and uh, there's a floor which is for uh, overseas people. I think it's the fourth floor or something like that. And I was staying in the fourth floor and I went down for my breakfast and I came back up and I saw this man coming out of my room with a mask on and a tank on his back. So I said to him, excuse me, what have you, what's, going, what's on? going on in my room? He said, no, 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 no problem. I said, I need to know what's going on in my room. You're in there and you... He said, oh... You have a mask as well? Yeah, everything. He said, snake in the toilet. And that's changed my habit ever since. Because wherever I am in the world now, I always look in the toilet before I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing story. Yes. Amazing story. What do you do now? I'm working as an agent now because before um, I used to have huge uh, problems, not problems, but I had so much money out because obviously dealing with Bangladesh, you have to do letters of credit and all this sort of thing. And I'm having to cover all that because I was running three companies. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, I'm now 71. And uh, to be honest, I don't really want to have those huge um, risks on my shoulders. So I now act as an agent for several factories in Bangladesh that I've dealt with for years. And I introduced my customers direct to them. And uh, from I, here, yes, and I'm also uh, a local councillor on mm -hmm. uh, a district councillor. Which council is that? Wickham District Council in High Wickham. High Wickham. Yeah. Um, okay. One of the biggest district councils in the country, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there, I um, I uh, um, enjoy myself, shall we say, in a completely different field. Helping the local community. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. So the Bangladesh experience. Would you say good or very good? <laughs> I'd go even better than that and say excellent. Excellent. Uh, and Thank and you. the reason is, I mean, you know, I was one. I was the. I think the original chairman of Conservative Friends of Bangladesh. And as you probably are aware, I'm sure you're aware, most Bangladeshis when they came here were socialists and voting yeah. Labour. So we had a very small start. We started off with about ten people. Um, and, I, and I was involved with that with Anne May, the Member of Parliament for they're um, going soon. for St Albans, Again, uh, and yeah. yeah. And to be honest, the, the membership of that organisation now is well over a thousand. So, mm -hmm. uh, and with branches all over the country. So mm -hmm. I feel proud of that. And I know that you've only got one Bengali in Parliament at the moment, but I think you're going to get three. three now. Is it three? Because there was one three women, three ladies, women. three women. Excellent record. That's good. And one in the, in the House of Lords. Brilliant. Absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant. So and tell us about your 30 visits from 1 to 30. What changes have you, have you well, when seen? I put, well, there's only one. I've been asked that question lots of times. Uh -huh. And to be honest, there's only one way to explain it, really. In the UK, we, we uh, experienced our Industrial Revolution uh -huh. at the end of the 1800s, very early 1900s. I think... Bangladesh experienced it in the Industrial Revolution in the late 70s, early, 90, uh, early 80s. Mm -hmm. People were coming from working on the land to then becoming garment manufacturers. Uh, these were people that were um, simple farmers mm -hmm. um, and they had no commercial experience. They had to learn on the job. This made people like my jobs much, much harder because you, you obviously expect people to know what they're doing and we're, we're trying to control production and all this sort of thing and making sure that we get what we order. Okay, but um, changes wise. Well, changes that wise. That engine, when you first landed, yes. no power. Yep. You set on an engine. Yes. Okay, dark. Yes. And when you last went, what yes. changes? The changes are significant, is really an understatement. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many more industries now. It's not just garments. Um, there's been a lot of situations where the garment industry in Bangladesh has got a bad name for sometimes the wrong reasons. You know, I can give you an explanation about that. When I first went there, the factory owner would invite the children in from school and he would sit them in a room and he would be responsible for feeding them and he'd be responsible for... We'd call it a creche here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, apparently, not the garment importers here, they call that 
taking advantage. Yes. Well, we do exactly the same here in, in a crash. Yeah. So I got quite angry being accused by people that we're using child labour. Um, I would never work with a factory with child labour. I make that very, very clear. Yeah. But as far as changes are concerned, there are now a number of international hotels in Dhaka. Um, I've stayed in three or four Whereas Different before, ones. when I first went there, there was mm. just the Sonagon mm -hmm. um, that was westernised. That, that's what the point I'm making. There were other hotels. I also stayed in some houses there, which was quite, uh, an, uh, quite a, uh, an experience, especially when I woke up one morning with a cow with its head through the window, mm. uh, <laughs> um, which was uh, quite interesting. The, the changes are to the good. They've got, still got quite a way to go. I'm, I'm encouraging people to keep going with Bangladesh. Um, when I first started there, there was no fax machine. Mm -hmm. There was no internet. We'll, we'll come back after a short break. Sure. Uh, viewers, we're just going for a short break. Stay with us. Thank you. Welcome back. We have been talking to a very good friend of us, a friend of Bangladeshi, about his experience and what he knew before and what he knows about the Bangladeshi community in UK and also Bangladesh. And we were talking about the changes he has witnessed um, during his 30 visits yeah. since 1980s. Yes. So uh, the question now is, um, Infrastructure-wise, those days when you first went, yes. I'm sure there were hardly any go good roads, no, the, uh, and also the airport and yes. you know local flights, Absolutely. trains. Yes, the, the, there was one decent road, which was the road to Chittagong. Okay, um, and uh, to be honest, it was a dual carriageway as such. But if there was a problem on one side, they just diverted you onto the other Obviously. side and you're going head on to the oncoming traffic. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as I'm concerned, th they're becoming much more westernised, much more modernised, and they're taking a lot more care about compliance. And compliance has always been a problem in Bangladesh, and it, and it still is in some respects. But the vast majority of serious business people now comply with all the regulations that go mm -hmm. with, with production. And also, as I said earlier, the trades now are much wider than just the garments. Uh, and, I've, and, and, and I've seen um, things from Bangladesh which I never thought could happen. Could so happen. I think, and obviously the medical facilities there are better. The Bangladesh is exporting medicines now. Exactly. As well as garments. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and I think the future is extremely bright, mm -hmm. extremely bright. And purely on a, 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 a political note, Brexit will actually benefit Bangladesh, I think. We'll come to that in a second. Yeah. But when you first went, yes. did you have a mobile? Mobile no, phone? No, no mobile phone, no. When you last went, did you have a mobile? Yes, I did. Did you have a smartphone? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Yes. So technology-wise, what well, is your opinion? Well, I used, it used to cost me four pound a page to send a fax to, to, to Bangladesh. So if I was sending a garment specification, it could be 75 pounds yeah. to send a spec. Now it's free because you've got internet. Uh -huh. um, telephone calls were hit and miss. Um, if you could get through, you were then very you lucky. Um, if you deal with the banks in, in, in Dhaka, um, I remember having to go there because I'd transmitted the letter of credit by by uh, a telex uh, and they said they didn't have it well i'd got a receipt for them having it and i went there and it was quite an education um, i went up to the third floor because i wanted to see the manager it was a huge bank and uh, about 50 people following me but now now it's it all works. electronic yes, isn't it it works internet banking yes. and so on it works so um Bangladesh is one of the 11 emerging countries now. It is. Yeah. I just think they have to concentrate. Do you feel good about it? Well, I've always... Like we do? Well, I've always it's felt good about Bangladesh. Yeah. Uh, I'm really glad you've got a lot of people here cooking Bengali food. Yes. Because it's my favourite. Do you like curry? I love curry. And Which uh, dish is your favourite? Probably chicken... Uh, 
Chicken shashlik. Chicken shashlik. Yeah. Okay. So how often do you have a curry? Once a week. Once a week. Yes. Uh, do you know the situation with the catering industry at the moment? Yes, I do. These in relation to chefs coming Staff shortages. And yeah, there is what? a solution to that. What in my opinion, that? there's a solution. The solution is, is that it has been it has been abused in the past, and that's why governments had to do something. I think if you if if you ignore that, then you're wrong because it has been abused in the past. Mm. I love to see a new chef in 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 a Bangladeshi restaurant because the menu changes and it gives you a better choice. I think there has to be a qualification for chefs to come into this country. They can't just say I'm a chef. They have had to do training in Bangladesh. They've had to get uh, some sort of uh, achievement but certificate, um, and then for, we bring say, them in for two years. Let's say Bangladesh yeah. chefs are not all of them are trained as such, but no. within the subcontinent there are, and they cannot come either because they need to. The employer need to have a license. Yes. He cannot have a license if he does takeaways. Yes. And it is over 30,000 salary he has to show. Yes. So a small business with five or six staff, how can he manage? Then comes the uh, staff shortages. Yeah. Okay. The, the SBS system, those days, young people could come to this country, came to this country yes. for a year. Yes. The government knew that they would not go back because, you know, they came for, from a very poor, poor background. background. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. the point I'm saying. But these people are now yes. trained, fully trained. They are chefs now, cooks now, managers now, but they are undocumented. But I do think that there is a responsibility on the Bangladeshi community or the Bangladeshi uh, powers that be to come up with a solution that they can offer to the British government. Don't just expect them to We've sit there. We've been screaming. No, no, but We're the point I'm making is is that I think if you, if, if you came up with a solution that said somebody's got to be able to prove that they're skilled, number one. I, I don't think we you are. can get away. Right? Yeah. The second thing is it should be limited to two years but renewable. And also it has to be policed that after the two years they go back. Yes, but we have been trying, in, you know, taking every opportunity, trying to uh, make the government of the day understand about the severity of the situation and the fact that at a rate of two, the catering restaurant or the takeaway is closing. Yes. But nothing is being done. We know that there are a lot of unemployed people within this country, but they are not encouraged or given incentive to go into the catering industry. So this is a catch-22 situation, is, but yeah. politicians are politicians, end of the day. Yeah, but I still, I still think that yeah. the Bengalis have to help. Can we just solution. very quickly, very quickly go to uh, climate change about Bangladesh? Yes. It's the biggest worry to me that I could ever have. As I told you, mm -hmm. the last time I went to Bangladesh, there was a earthquake there. And it was the first earthquake in 41 years. And where I was staying in Silet, I looked at the topography mm -hmm. and I was no more than one and a half metres above sea level. Now, what I'm saying to you, with, with that type of uh, cl uh, climate change, sea levels are going to rise. If yeah. there is an earthquake, a tsunami is going to come in and okay. that's going to be a huge problem. Thank you. Thank you. When did you first meet a Bangladeshi? Oof probably 40 years ago. Okay, and do you have many friends here? Yes. Bangladeshi friends? Yes. When I say friends, they're more associates because, okay. you know, yes, they're more, more so. I know lots of, lots of people. As I said, conservative friends of Bangladesh, I, I have friends across the board in, in that organization okay. and they're doing really very well. Do you think with Brexit, mm. countries like Bangladesh would benefit? Yes, 100%. How? Because it will open the market at, as a direct situation and not a European situation. And, and I think also that as long as you keep the GSP, mm -hmm. which um, is really interesting, you know, the general system of preference is critical for the retail trade in this country. For the other trades, it's not, but for, for the retail trade, it's critical. And if they keep that, then I can see it only going from strength to strength. Thank you. And um, do you think with Brexit, yes. Commonwealth yes. will be revived? It depends who becomes king or queen. 
<laughs> we have the Queen. Yeah, I know, but the Queen <laughs> is in her 90s. But I, I know and, you... Uh, and, you, you, and, and, you know, I want her to live forever, but she's not yeah. going to live forever. Yeah. And it will depend on who becomes king. It depends king on the government. Yes. Well, the I don't government know if and the yeah, parliament. Yeah, I think the leader, the, the, the royalty govern themselves effectively. And I think it depends who becomes king or queen. You think so? Yeah, I think so. That's interesting to yes. know. But we always thought that the parliament is the supreme decision makers. Well, no, they still have to go and ask permission. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So you have said about the Bangladesh uh, as a country, yes. as a country, you have said about the co British Bangladeshi community. What do you think uh, the way the Bangladeshis are you know, advancing, how do you think they're advancing? Well, they appear to... they are? Yeah, uh, you mean in the UK? In the UK. In the UK, they've got one thing going for them. They're the ones that are integrating. Uh, okay. They integrate better than mm -hmm. any of the other Asian communities. Mm -hmm. Or any of the communities, not just Asian communities. They Education-wise, I think we are uh, number one within the Indian yeah. subcontinent. I mean, where I come from is, is one of the wealthiest areas in the country, and we've got grammar schools. and. If you look at the grammar schools, there are Bangladeshis in, in those grammar schools achieving wonderful AVIT level results and doing very, very well. And I encourage that. Um, and to be honest, hopefully they'll stay <laughs> because we need them to stay. No, they're going to stay. Yeah. It is their country. Yeah, exactly. They're not going to go anywhere. <laughs> well, I know. Anywhere. I think I think that their opportunities may increase because I do speak to some English people that say, well, I'm going to go to Australia because it's mm. going to be that much better. So we're going to need to hang on to the people with the qualifications mm. and retain our worldwide dominance in dominance. research and you know all that sort of thing, which is, let's be honest, the basis of this country. Okay, thank you so much for coming You're to very welcome. the studio and um, we are very pleased on behalf of the community and journalists. I want to thank you for coming today. Viewers, we had a very special guest today, Tony Lee, who has been to Bangladesh 30 times since 1980s. He has talked about his experience in Bangladesh. He has talked about his experience in the United Kingdom, Kingdom and the community. Um, we'll be back soon with a new guest, very soon. Stay with us. Thank you.